protect the city's celebrated high school football team. County prosecutor and county sheriff said their investigation fell apart because the Colmans were uncooperative. The Colmans deny this and accuse investigators of not doing enough to push the case forward. Miss Coleman and her family say they had to leave town because of harassment. The demonstration received publicity via social networks and received help from the hacking group Anonymous in spreading the word. And now a special prosecutor has been appointed to look again at the case. The case has drawn comparisons to one in March of this year at Steubenville, Ohio, where two high school football players were convicted of raping a girl after an alcohol fueled party. The case came to light via text messages, online videos and social media posts made the morning after the rape and attracted nationwide attention. Some claimed that the community, including local police, had sought to cover up the crime to protect the accused, who were members of a celebrated high school American football team. Trent Mays, who is 16, and Malik Richmond, 17, were eventually convicted of raping a 16-year-old. But the case caused bitter divide in the town, a small and economically depressed former steel town that had immense pride in its high school football team, known as the Big Red. These are not the only two examples that highlight not just violence against young women, but the role social media can play both in a positive and negative way. There's been some soul-searching in America about the culture that surrounds high school sports and its wider position in society. Well, joining us from our New York studio is Aaron Ryan, a journalist and broadcaster. And from Florida, Lyle Walker, who runs a blog which, amongst other things, discusses American sports. Thank you both for being part of Sports Hour. Um, Lyle, if we can start with you, what is it about high school sports that makes it so important in American society? I, I think it's really part that's ingrained of our, our culture here, especially in the southern part of the, of the, of the country. Uh, it starts probably before even high school in Pee Wee football, uh, where we, we take it very, very seriously from tailgating uh, to going to games to the practices. And these players are um, elevated to this almost sense of uh, celebrity status at a very young age. So, um, and that bleeds into high school football and then to college football and then obviously to the NFL. So it is part of our culture. It, it is done up on, on the Thursday nights, on Friday nights, on Saturdays, on Sundays. It's literally something that is not just a pastime. It really ingrains our culture. If you just drive around, you will see multiple flags on people's cars from high school, you know, promoting their team. Uh, we, we, families are divided. It's, it's, it's really a part of the culture, not just something we do on the weekends. And Aaron, is it, is it just the males that, that, that are sports stars or, or for females, for you growing up with sports around you as well? Do we see sports women held in, in such high esteem? Well, um, I, I did see women being celebrated as athletes, but the way that female athletes were held up compared to the way men were held up was, was slightly different. Um, here's an example. I went to college at the University of Notre Dame, and when I was there, our football team was not great, but our women's basketball team was amazing. And those women on campus were held up as this, you'd see them in the dining hall, and it was like, wow, I just saw the center of the basketball team. Everybody got really excited. They were really, um, they were, they were lauded as, as kind of these heroes on campus. But the way that they acted was totally different than I've seen male athletes act. Um, and I think that's partly because when men play sports, part of what is, is to part of what they're told they'll have as a reward for being good at sports is the adoration of women. And there's not a similar dynamic at play when women play sports. I, I played team sports all growing up and never, the boys are going to like me. And I think it's just a different way that, that communities treat male athletes versus female athletes. Lyle, would you agree this, this adoration that, that male footballers in particular or male sportsmen have at, at the end of it? Is this, this golden opportunity to be adored by women? I would say that's part of, part of it, uh, especially with cheerleaders and, and everything. When I, I played high school football, my dad played college football, and there was def definitely an aspect of, of 
fan clubs and, and you walk around campus with this almost godlike mentality because you can almost do no wrong and, and you're lifted up higher than, say, anybody really else. This is in high school. You know, the elite players are treated far di- different than just your regular uh, students. So they, we, you walk around and there is a mentality of um, – I can get away with, with anything, um, and, I, and I think that plays into it. But I, I think it's a cultural thing that we, we uh, um, elevate these players to a high level and when we really shouldn't. You know, I think it's a, a cultural issue um, that we need to fix far before they ever reach high school. If it is a, a cultural issue and, the, and the, they are held in such esteem, what about these, these incidences that we've, we've heard reported? Are they isolated, or, or is it something – endemic this treatment of women caroline if i could just if i could just break in i think that i would hesitate to say that this is something that is is universal among american male athletes or american football players um but i would say that there is a really troubling um segment of football culture that is tied into sort of an an entitlement to women's bodies or a a feeling um, that you can do anything. Um, So I I wouldn't say that it's it's completely saturated the culture, but I would say that it's a really troubling corner. Anytime you you go to a part of the country where um, football players, especially college football players, um, are are elevated to a certain level, there's a sort of, uh, there there are behavior problems that go along with that. And and I'm not from the South, I'm from the middle of the country, but um, there's a, a big football culture culture there too. And I saw it when I was in college and I saw it um, at other universities where my friends were going. And it's it's definitely something that isn't just concentrated to the South. Um, and it's it's definitely something that is is spread throughout the country. No. And does it start? So, go ahead, Lyle. I was just going to agree with that to an extent. You know, um, there is uh, when these when these players are, are, like I said, from very young age when they're on the football field and they're not held accountable for their actions and they are almost given a a, a free walk through life and you know to the point where student athletes are their academic standards are reduced to a point where they don't have to make the same grades as a normal student to get into college. Um, they believe that they are not held to the same standards and I think that bleeds into obviously the home life and can lead to demanding things from women or other people that they that they feel they deserve but again I don't know if it's a football culture or a football issue but something that's deep inside society that that tends to alleviate and, that, and it's not every player I mean I played offensive line and defense right so it was not I wasn't uh, put on this pedestal but especially the wide receivers the quarterbacks the running backs the more high profile players uh, who saw the got to touch the football more often and were put in the papers um, it, it pumps up this chauvinistic or, or this this testosterone that we're all just naturally given and because of that it's like putting I'm sorry, putting gasoline on a fire. Uh, you're, you're taking emotional issues that come from the home. I mean, a, you know, a, a home situation that's probably not the best, and they're not held accountable, and you throw um, violence on top of that, and it's just like put, literally just throwing fuel on a fire because these issues are, are deeply rooted into this person. But I don't know if, again, if, I don't know if it's football is the issue, mm. but something within, within society. Aaron, these are these are young guys, aren't they? You know, we're talking about high school kids. Right. They can't. We can't put all the blame on them, can we? Surely this is this is coaches, isn't it? Is this high school? Is this is this parents? Is it the wider community? Who is to blame? Absolutely, it's not. It, you can't put um, the entirety of the blame on the, the kids themselves because a lot of times they're ingrained with this attitude before they're really old enough to know better. And I agree with Lyle saying that he, they that a lot of times they don't have the best support system maybe at home. But I think that coaches and athletic directors and communities um, and adults that really should know better a lot of times play a role in enabling an entitlement attitude, um, an attitude among players uh, that they can get away with whatever they want, that they can have whatever they want, and that they're gods. And I completely agree that it is the coach's responsibility, especially at a younger age, to ingrain in their athletes um, a sense of responsibility to their community, a sense of pride in themselves, and a sense of respect for other people. Yeah. How do we deal, Aaron? I was just going to say, how do we deal, Aaron, with with those that are that are in that situation now that are these these young feisty sports jocks when we're, we're seeing these high profile cases how do we change the wider community's attitude 
to these players? Or, or what is the, the attitude to those that, that have done wrong or alleged to have done wrong? Well, I, I think that the fact that we're talking about it now is a really good sign. I know that it's really ugly to hear these stories and they're really unpleasant and almost unbelievable sounding, but I think the fact is that the culture at large is not tolerant of that behavior anymore. And so the fact that there's there's outrage over um, over high school boys taking sexual advantage of younger girls and trying to use their football player status to get away from, to get away with it and we're all mad about that is a good thing. That's progress because this has probably been happening for decades and people just didn't care. So I think that right now we're moving in a positive direction. I think that the culture is changing to be more discouraging of entitled behavior from athletes. And um, I, I think that's a good thing. I think there's still a lot of work to do, but I think that we're moving in a positive direction, even though it might seem kind of grim right now. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, these kids are elevated early. And I, and I just – I was going to throw out an example of – it's not in high school, but it's in college football. There's a player at um, Louisiana State University, or, or better known as LSU, where as a freshman he was, you know, he literally – I don't know if he raped, but he, he had domestic violence against a minor. And that player uh, is still on that football team. And the coaches actually left it up to the team – to decide whether this player is going to stay on the football team. And he is, again, he's now a sophomore, and he's still on the team, and he's starting. He'll be playing against my team this coming Saturday. And I think that's the issue, is that we are not holding these players accountable. And because they are good at football or basketball or hockey or whatever it is in that area, soccer, uh, they just don't think they're going to be, you know, they're not going to be held to the same standard, and they're going to continue to do this. His behavior is not modified because of he wasn't held accountable. He literally was just slapped on the wrist. He missed a few games, and he's back on the football field. It's my opinion that player, if you're convicted of something of that magnitude, um, you should be kicked off the team, and you should not be allowed to play football um, pretty much ever again until you can prove that you have, you have fixed the issues deep inside. So it's a psychological thing, too. You know, Mike Tyson in, 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 in boxing is a very violent sport, and he was very good at his, his sport, and, they, and no, nobody spent the time to at a young, when he was young to help him deal with his emotional issues. And when he got into the ring and he got outside of the ring, those issues just became magnified. I mean, it was just it, – and it exploded. Erin, I, I wonder, given how much money is in this sport, when, when eventually these players become successful, if we need to see more happening from, from the top down or, or from, a, from a government level down, what, what would you see happen? Oh, that's, that's a really complicated question. Um, and going back to something Lyle said earlier about how it's not just endemic to football, I agree with him. Um, I think the more money that's at stake, the more likely – coaches and mentors and athletic directors and team owners are going to be willing to turn a blind eye to bad behavior um, because you never hear about, I don't know, a, a poorly behaved curling player in the Olympics. You know, it's, it's always it, for, for, from a news perspective, you're always hearing about bad behavior from bigger, more moneyed sports. Um, and I think that it's not necessarily going to be a top-down change because there is so much money at stake. I think what's happening is that there's a there's a larger cultural change going on where people are becoming less tolerant of um, sexual entitlement of, of athletes as a population. And as we become more intolerant of that, I think – team owners will have to be accountable to the fans that demand some level of, of behavior and some standards from, from their athletes. I'd also add that the Internet and the availability of information is making uh, is holding players accountable whether they want to be held accountable or not. Uh, because now, thanks, you know, 10 years ago, if a player did something at a bar, you maybe wouldn't hear about it outside of small rumor circles in, in the, a local community. But now... Um, Instagram, Facebook, it's immediately everywhere in the country. So mm -hmm. even if even if a bad behavior takes place in a town or a region or university that is is typically enabling of this sort of thing, um, it's 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 spread so quickly to parts of the country where it's not okay that usually the outcry is is pretty swift. 
sorry. I've Aaron, got, we're going to yeah. have to leave it there, unfortunately, because I know you've got to get out of, of that studio. So I'm just going to end it there with you, if that's okay, Aaron, and, and say thank you. I'll get a, a final thought from you, Lyle, in just a few moments. But, yeah. but Aaron, thank you very much for your time. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. And, Lyle, it was very interesting. Thanks for, uh, for being on with me. Thank you. Um, Erin, thank you very much. You are about to be kicked out. I'd love ah. to spend longer, so <laughs> apologies. Um, but um, I will drop you an email, and thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. Great stuff. Thanks. Take care. Yep, thank bye-bye. you, Erin. Thank Bye. you. Okay, Lyle, um, I'll, I'll just get your reaction to what, what Erin said. Uh, I'll just check we're still recording. Um, I, I, I do believe uh, the money plays a huge factor because these players, a lot of them come from – like I mentioned earlier, very poor backgrounds, and I don't mean just, you know, uh, economically, but, but they have uh, single-family homes or something like that where their, their influences around them uh, are not what they should. Let's just put it, you know, I, I think we can do a better job raising our children. I have three kids of my own, and um, I put a high price on raising my children in a, in a very respectful manner. So these kids come from very broken families, poor backgrounds, and they see the NFL, they see NBA, they see, you know, baseball, whatever sport they've chosen as a way out. And they'll do anything uh, to make that happen. And, and some of them handle it fine. You know, I mean, I, and I have to say this, I do believe we're talking about a very small um, percentage of players. I know I play high school well, football, so, you know. That, that's quite a key point, though, isn't it, Lyle, just finally? I mean, is it not fair to say that without sports, without the discipline it brings, so many young men's lives there could, you know, there possibly could be more cases of violence because of the discipline that they do have brought through sport. I agree with that. And if you would, and this is not news to anybody, uh, at least in, in, in America, uh, a lot of these players, they would openly admit, uh, especially ones in high school and, and probably college, if they didn't have football as an outlet, a lot of them would be in gangs, would be in very rough environments because this is their way. This is a way to an education. It's a way to a better life for them. So uh, there are certain coaches that I believe do a very good job at disciplining their players and holding them to a high standard. Uh, you can't fix everybody. You can't prevent everybody because we are humans. And we are, uh, as much as we try to be good, we're inherently bad for the most part. But I, I do think that um, – there's a there's a high percentage of players in the NFL that are doing it the right way and in high school and in college, but it is the the rotten egg, so to speak, that give us all somewhat of a bad name. And um, I wish it didn't happen, but at the end of the day, it's going to, and we can only do uh, a better job in the homes and in society of holding these players and these people to a, um, a higher standard and holding them accountable to their actions. If we don't do that, Lyle, what what do you think will happen? It's only going to get worse. Uh, money is getting greater and greater and greater. Now you have discussions of college football players getting paid because the colleges are making so much money. Uh, you're going to see, you know, you already see because someone is a good football player that their issues are, are swept under the rug. Well, when you throw the, an investment, uh, a financial investment on top of that, it even gets worse. Uh, we have an issue right now with the Miami, Miami Dolphins where a player was being bullied, literally bullied, and he's a grown man, and he had to quit the team because of it. Um, so that's just another issue within the NFL that you're seeing. So it's, it's I, I agree with um, Aaron with, with Twitter, with Facebook. Uh, players are not allowed to get away with they, what, what they used to. It's a different age, uh, and you have to be very careful with what you say and how you do things because it can it can explode in your face if you say say something incorrect, and that's just on Twitter, let alone if you're actually harming women or doing something um, and the news gets out. So with social media, it's going to be a lot harder for players to get away with things they shouldn't. But if we don't do something as society, uh, if we don't do something from the get-go when, uh, young, at, at their young age and, you know, peewee football up to high school, it's only going to get worse because we're not doing anything to stop it. We're just really just cultivating that 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 culture of I can do no wrong. I am a God. Give me what I want. Lyle Walker in Florida and Aaron Ryan, a journalist in New York. Thank you both for joining us on Sports Hour. Thank you. Uh, that, that's great. Th- thank you very much indeed. Um, I really appreciate it. Sorry we had some technical difficulties okay. at the start, Lyle. Um, I really appreciate you taking time out of your working day um, to speak to us. And um, uh, and, and um, what I will do is, uh, as I said, Aaron, I'll, I'll drop you an email and I'll send you all the, the links. This will, this will go out on um, Saturday, okay. uh, but very early your time, so I doubt you'll want to get up uh, to hear <laughs> it uh, quite that early. Um, but um, I'll drop you the, the – you can download and listen again 